What's going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another transfer update video. And we're back in the office, people. Um, you know, I've been doing the, the latest videos out there in, in the jungle, in the bush, in the forest, wherever, you know, surrounded by nature and all that. But we're back. Uh, I'm glad to be back, but I did enjoy the break as well, people. But big up everyone who's been tuning in, commenting, some great banter as well um, in the comments. So really appreciate each and every one of your support as always. And just to give you that little nudge, people, we are now under 600 away from 50k so we're getting there people if you haven't already subscribed lick down that button and let's hit 50k sooner rather than later and also a final reminder tomorrow night people midnight watch along midnight kickoff uk time arsenal against everton Preseason friendly, obviously the game's over there in Baltimore in America. I'll be live from 11.30 p.m. It's going to be a late one. You know, I'll have my hot chocolate ready, people, and uh, we'll be watching the game together hopefully tomorrow night. So join me for that, 11.30 p.m. UK time, Arsenal against Everton. Watch along tomorrow night. Right, let's get into the latest news. Alexander Zinchenko edges closer to a move to Arsenal. We spoke about it yesterday in, in quite a lot of detail. Um, we've read a little bit more into it today. There's been a few more announcements. So the latest on Zinchenko, for those that missed the show yesterday, um, he is edging closer now to a move to Arsenal. It's believed the fee will be 35 million overall. Initially, they were saying 25 to 30. It's believed Manchester City want 30 million up front with maybe an additional 5 million in add-ons. So you're looking at a combined price of 35 million pounds. Now, are you happy with that deal? He's 25 years of age, captain of the Ukraine, won titles at Manchester City. He can play left back, he can play centre mid, he can play wing back. He's very good on the ball. As I said on yesterday's show, I hope we're signing him as somebody that can play in a number of positions rather than maybe luring him to Arsenal by promising that he will play centre mid. I still think we need to go and buy a specialist centre midfielder. But I do rate Zinchenko. This deal looks like it's going to get done. Now, a lot of news has come out today regarding Manchester City's point of view to this deal. Manchester City have given the green light for this deal to go ahead. It was believed that Nathan Ake was going to leave and join Chelsea. But Manchester City have now said they want to keep Nathan Ake because he can play left centre-back and because he can play left-back as well. They're prepared to let Zinchenko go. Um, you know, they believe that he won't get a lot of football and they believe that if they can get this £35 million, they're prepared to do business. Now... I think this deal will happen. You know, when we were chasing Jesus the whole time, I said I thought that deal would happen. I think Zinchenko ends the window at Arsenal. In fact, some reports coming out today, people, that this deal could be done sometime next week. This deal is expected to be tied up pretty quickly. He's not on a massive wage. The transfer fee should be easy enough to negotiate and this deal could be done sooner rather than later. So look out for this one, people. And it also says... Zinchenko is keen to join Arsenal, work with Arteta and also obviously his former teammate Gabriel Jesus. So Zinchenko to Arsenal edges ever closer. Let's talk about our record signing people, Nicolas Pepe. Um, you know, we had such high hopes and expectations when we signed this guy. I think we can see that his Arsenal career could be coming to an end. It's a bit of a sad tale because I've always felt there was a real talented footballer there. But talent and what you produce is two different things. You know, a lot of people with talent haven't had um, a great time of it at certain clubs. You know, circumstances can affect it. And uh, Nicolas Pepe is being targeted by Seville. Seville wanted... Anthony Martial, but they walked away from the deal because of his 250000 a week wages. They're interested in signing Nicolas Pepe. They like him. They want to sign him for £18 million. This would be an initial £15 million with £3 million in add-ons. I mean, I, I listen, I know, I know. We're in a bad position. He hardly played last year. He's on big wages. Nobody is going to pay big money for him. But, you know, when I see Nico Williams leave Liverpool and go to Nottingham Forest for £17 million, and I'm seeing Nicolas Pepe 
18 million, 15 million initially with 3 million in add-ons. I mean, we seriously have to look at the way we do business moving forward, people. We are horrendous when it comes to selling players. I know he's not a prized asset. Clubs know we want to sell him. Clubs know his wages are high, so it's going to be difficult. But 18 million for Nicolas Pepe is horrendous, but... They seem like they're interested. Apparently, Pepe would be open to a move to Spain. Keep your eyes peeled on this one, people. Pepe to Seville, £18 million. Um, yesterday, people, I was talking about Thomas Partey. And at the time, I was saying that I hadn't seen any evidence or, or photos that he was in America on tour. Um, we have now seen from Arsenal, he's in the videos, he's in the pictures, He's over there in America training with the team in Baltimore. I would imagine he will probably be involved in the friendly against Everton tomorrow. So we'll have to see what happens with that one, people. Won't talk about it for too long today. But Thomas Partey is in America. He's training and he's with the squad um, over there in Baltimore at the moment. Let's talk about Lucas Paqueta. Uh, Fabrizio Romano has done a report on him today. Fabrizio says Edu and Arteta are massively keen on him. But Fabrizio says it is not a priority for Arsenal at the moment. I, I never quite understand that. Surely you can do more than one or two deals at once. Um, and you always run the risk of somebody else coming in and signing them. But, you know, with Arsenal, it seems to be one at a time. And um, it looks as if Arsenal may go back in for him at the end of the window, but doesn't look like it's a priority at the moment. We know that they want 60 million euros as a bare minimum and maybe Arsenal at the moment don't see that as value for money or they want to spend their money in other areas. So Lucas Paqueta maybe goes to the back burner at the moment. With Yuri Tillemans, who you know we haven't heard anything about, obviously yesterday we revealed um, that his house is up for sale. Um, does that mean he's signing for Arsenal? I don't know. He could be staying at Leicester and just buying a new house. But, you know, the Arsenal Twitter fan base especially, they will hunt you down if you're on the move. Um, so nothing at the moment with Yuri Tillemans. One player, though, people, that is definitely not coming back to Arsenal. We've dreamed about it. We've spoken about it. Serge Gnabry, he's set to sign a brand new deal with Bayern Munich, four-year contract with a one-year option, which could run for five years if the option is taken up. They've managed to make a breakthrough. Apparently, they made promises to him that even though Sadio Mane is coming in, they view him as the main right winger, if you like. Those promises plus a hefty pay rise and uh, any, any option or dream of him coming to Arsenal seems to have gone. And reports stated that Arsenal were just never in for him, um, which I just can't understand. Now, listen, they could have had a conversation in the background and been rejected, and it doesn't always make the press, but I think we all know we would have loved Serge Gnabry back at Arsenal Football Club. But a new deal for him, four-year contract of a one-year option. He'll be staying at Bayern Munich, and he will not be joining Arsenal this summer. And one little bit more transfer news, people, before we round up. Amari Hutchinson, young player, very skillful, been on the bench a number of times for the first team at the back end of last season. He has rejected a new contract from Arsenal and has decided to join Chelsea. Um, he'll be joining Chelsea. Um, I do believe Arsenal will get a little bit of compensation for that. But of course, a young prospect at the club, somebody that's highly rated, and uh, he's going to Chelsea. We know Chelsea uh, have a fantastic youth setup. I don't think there's any doubt about that. The amount of players that they sell for huge profit or get into the first team, uh, I think we all know that they're probably one of the best in the country at it. So Amari Hutchinson, a uh, bit of a surprise in one sense because he's been on the bench a lot at Arsenal. I don't see him going to Chelsea and getting on the bench. Um, but at the same time, Chelsea pay huge wages to youth team players. You know, I've heard reports before that there's players at Chelsea getting 30, 40 grand a week that haven't made an appearance in the first team. They're totally different the way they throw their money around. So Amari Hutchinson, young prospect on his way to Chelsea. And uh, as an Arsenal fan, I'll be saying uh, I never rated him anyway. Um, but that, that's the protective mechanism of being an Arsenal fan. You know how that goes, people. Thank you very much for tuning in. Like the video, subscribe, comment on anything we've spoken about today. Don't forget, we'll be back tomorrow, 11.30 p.m. in the evening for the midnight watch-along UK time. Arsenal against Everton. Pre-season friendly over there in Baltimore. Make sure you join me for that. 
And um, yeah, if there's enough news, we'll do a we'll do a show in the daytime tomorrow, possibly. If not, 11:30 p.m. Subscribe to the channel. We're less than 600 away from 50,000 subscribers. Enjoy your evening or your daytime, people. I'll have a couple of announcements for you on the watch along tomorrow as well. So listen out for that. Uh, take care, everyone, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bless. Mm -hmm.